my name's Kurt Euler. And um, while I'm Kurt Euler, the man that helped set this up and that will be helping us moderate today is going to be Dwayne on, our on my team. So Dwayne makes all the magic happen. I just show up and provide some content. So Dwayne, if, um, feel free to jump in at any time as well as you feel need. And um, anyone else as we kind of go through this, I'd like this to be as interactive as possible. So if you have questions while I'm going through the uh, material, go ahead and leave them in the chat. Dwayne will either jump in or he will collect your questions to make sure that we get to them when we have the Q&A later um, in this. And uh, I may go ahead, if I happen to see it, I may go ahead and jump in it. And uh, thank you, Dwayne Jokes. I, he's the wizard's apprentice. So um, I, I may be that wizard from uh, Fantasia in, uh, with Mickey Mouse where uh, it goes crazy, but that's how we do big things. So today, I think most everyone on the call is a on this webinar is a showcase uh, IDX current customer. If you're trialing, this applies to you as well and what you'll be able to do. We're going to talk through tips and tricks to growing your real estate business with showcase IDX. So we're going to walk through. It's going to be at least an hour, maybe a little bit more. I will be around for as much Q&A as you guys need. So if you have questions as we go through either about what I'm covering or something you wish I would cover, um, by all means, leave it in the chat and we will get to it. So the agenda for this webinar, we're going to talk through first the results and the foundation that you need to have a successful real estate website. Then we're going to talk through nine tips and tricks to grow your business with Showcase IDX. That's going to be the bulk, the meat of what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about one bonus tactic that I've seen be very successful for agents. We'll cover that after we walk through kind of the, the, the meat and potatoes, the stuff that works for everyone. Uh, we do have free stuff that we'll be following up with, with uh, details about how to do many of the specific things that we're going to cover in here. And we also do have some uh, courses as well that we offer for free. And then we're going to go in an open Q&A where they said, I'll answer any questions that you have related to this topic. For those that are Showcase IDX customers, uh, Scott Lockhart and I will also be doing a Showcase uh, Live on Friday where we, we will be talking about more of the business as a whole and some of the things coming with the uh, product. For those of you that don't know me, you might ask Kurt Euler who. So uh, just a couple like fun facts about me. I was born in Oaklawn, Illinois. I started my first real business uh, with as a legal entity when I was 14. Uh, Division one athlete at Vanderbilt, actually in three sports, cross country, indoor and outdoor track. Education, I have a biomedical and electrical engineering background with a master's in financial risk management. That really translates to computer science merged with finance. So all the high-end uh, financial terms, uh, derivatives, um, mortgage-backed securities, being able to not just create those financially, but then actually code out the systems for them. And uh, I, I've been doing SEO. I've been doing marketing for a long time. My first experiments with web design and SEO started back in 1995. So yes, I, I do have a couple of years on me. But uh, I've been doing this for a long time and I've been blessed to do some really big things. So a little bit more also on, on, on why you should listen to me, not just because I'm gonna walk through the stuff about Showcase IDX, but I'm here and what I convey to you is what I've seen, what I see as a marketer. As a marketer, not just that's working with Showcase IDX, but as somebody who has run many, many sites that have had millions of monthly visitors. That's huge. Um, when I give keynotes, a lot of times I'm introduced or they will refer to me as a perpetual audience builder or audience collector. Doesn't matter the niche or the genre. It's just one of the skills that God's given me is to be able to come in and collect an audience for the company, the brands that I work with full time or that I may consult or coach with. Um, really applicable to this topic. In the last two years, I've examined more than 50,000 real estate websites, looking at the code, what ranks, how they compare to each other. I've looked at a bunch more, but I've really kind of dug into kind of about 50,000 or so. And I've worked with a bunch of big brands. If you have a navigation system in your car, you use Waze on your phone. I, I, I was in the, those companies. Um, I kind of got my first like really large, large site when we acquired traffic.com for 172 million, I think it was. And we kind of ran all the traffic websites for radio TV stations across the country. Um, done a lot of things in influencer marketing side. I've worked with big brands on the social media and marketing side, um, like Apple and Garmin. I, I used to work for years every other week within the halls of Google and Facebook with a company that we had called Vitro. And then much closer to the people that we talk about here, 
I've coached, I coach and advise thousands of small and medium sized businesses and thousands of influencers and entrepreneurs. So I, I have that pedigree from the big companies. I've been blessed to do some massive things before, but when it comes down to it, my heart is really helping uh, solo entrepreneurs and smaller businesses, a lot of times family businesses, um, kind of, I, I, I like the underdogs because I, I see these big, uh, the, these big sites, these big companies. And a lot of times they're big because they, they just have a big ad budget. And there's a lot of things I, I don't always like about some of the big brands. And so to be able to help the underdogs, the thousands of SMBs, the real estate agents that come out and, and compete against the big behemoths, which I've also worked at and seen their tactics, that's my background. So that's a little bit about why you should listen to me. Um, Feel free to look me up on my website, tons of information on there. Let's move into what, why you're here. We're gonna talk now about the results that you're gonna get from, from, from this if you implement some of these things. And I've seen some of the websites, Wayne Unger's on here, the websites that Charles, one of our partners has helped build uh, for people. So I'm gonna see some of the results, but I'm just, we're just gonna cover really high level of the foundation because for even the agents that have been with Showcase for a lot of years, I think sometimes there's some of the foundational things that are missed. Because a lot of times in real estate, we get caught up with the shiny uh, shiny object syndrome. So I want to cover what's the kind of the core there. So from a results perspective, what you're going to get from going through this, if you actually implement the things that we're talking about here, you don't have to do them all, but these are kind of the tips and tricks that I, I see a lot of people just go really fast past them and they don't, they don't put these in place in their websites. And when you do these, you're going to get organic traffic. Some of the results here. Um, yes, the website using Showcase IDX, uh, you're going to get leads um, and, and leads. I just went to pick. These are not our biggest sites. These definitely are not our smallest sites. There's a lot more sites that don't do anywhere near the traffic of this. This is kind of, you know, in, in the upper middle there a little bit. And so in blue, you're going to see number of signups on a monthly basis from, uh, from, from, from just a, a handful of sites. How many do I have here? A through J. So 10 sites. Um, so blue is the signups. Some have, you know, high fifties, some get up to, you know, 130, 135 or so. And then messages. Messages is another thing that from a leads perspective is important to me. Sometimes that's that, you know, you can grow a business only on just people signing up. I like to think about getting interactions that are going as well. And so by all means, there may be conversations that are taking place within email platforms, phone conversations outside of Showcase IDX. This green is only when somebody clicks that, hey, I have a question about this property. And there's some things you can do on your site, pop-ups and other things that will help encourage that. So we see on here, well, well, there's a lot of sites in this 10 that I show you that they get a good amount of signups. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of our customers that I know would love to get 50 signups on a monthly basis. And so if you're getting five, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna walk through some things that'll help you grow. Um, but, but the messages is also important. So we may cover just another kind of full topic on how do we encourage some of those conversations when somebody uh, says, hey, I wanna know about this property. Another big thing for me, I don't think I have this slide here. Okay, let me come back to that. Another big thing is client retention. We're gonna cover, cover that. A lot of you guys will showcase IDX, you know that this is, People come to us a lot of times for SEO, the lead gen, that organic traffic, but then they find the organic traffic. They, uh, or sorry, the, the the client retention. They find out that, wow, a huge portion of their past clients that they were losing to other agents because their website wasn't using Showcase IDX, and there's some reasons for that. And ultimately, in the end of the end of the day, is about increased uh, gross commission income. As an agent, that's how you guys get paid. Uh, you need to do more transactions. We want to help you do more transactions. I want the transactions to be easier. So these other things are kind of milestones that Jay Valento. Hey, glad to see Jay joining. Um, I, I love love seeing the the organic traffic, the leads, hearing stories about client retention, how how, how people just they didn't know what was wrong with their business before, but they felt then that they can see that it's quantifiably helped with Showcase. But the increased GCI is what you see at the end of the day. And so these tips will help get you through that. Some of the stats about, you know, that lead into the foundations. So from NAR, this is, these two top two are 2019 numbers. So they've only gotten bigger as, uh, and as of 2019, 50% of uh, home buyers said that they found this home that they purchased from an internet search that they did. So not that an agent helped them with, but that they did themselves. One out of two. 
28% of the home buyers um, in 2019 said that they found it with the help of their agent. So there may be a little bit of some agent websites, you guys helping with MLS searches, maybe even you know save searches from your own site. But but together that, that that's 78% of all things. Well, that's huge. So one of the reasons you guys are using, you know, are focused so much on your websites as the hub of your marketing. But the other stat is if you don't have a website that your clients will actually use, if, you have, if you're using an outdated IDX that uses subdomains, uses iframes, uh, you're using the free IDX that, that a lot of the MLSs give. And I understand they have to check the box and give something, but the free IDXs, I mean, they're, they're just not good. If, if you don't have a website that your clients will use and they go use Zillow, Trulia, or Redfin, I can guarantee you that 100% of the time, there will be a different agent in the mix at some point. Because what happens at Zillow? Zillow earns $2 billion plus selling your, lead, your, your customers contact information and budget. Hey, Kurtz in Roswell, Georgia, he's looking for four bedroom homes with three baths in the $450,000 $500,000 range. They sell not just my contact info, but, the, uh, but that information. That's how they make the bulk of their business. And in the future, as we all know, as they're shifting more and more, not only do, will there be another, perhaps somebody from another, uh, the Zillow selling to another brokerage, it may be Zillow competing as well. So that's why it comes to me, the foundation. To be successful, agents have to have WordPress. I saw another chat from our customer success team. Somebody asked about, hey, do you guys work on Joomla? Sorry, we don't. We've looked at all the ways we could work with uh, some of the other platforms, Joomla, Squarespace, Wix. It just doesn't give the power to bring a modern IDX experience into a website the way that we can with WordPress. Plus, even big, a lot of the big, biggest portals do run on WordPress and many, many of the biggest websites that we all use day to day run on WordPress. Hosting is a big deal. Um, for me, it's really, uh, if you've read the customers, uh, the top successful websites uh, guide that I did, just don't have shared hosting. As long as you're not on the bargain basement, GoDaddy, $5, $8 a month, you're usually going to be okay. We, we, we can help you with that, give some recommendations. A good theme doesn't have to be a great theme. It could be a great theme, but if you have a just a good theme, it's a foundation is really all you need to kind of go out and compete to get the results I showed. Of course, the modern IDX and home search. Um, once you kind of get that nailed on the left, you have to have uh, my, my coaching to, to agents when MLS is bringing me in to give a keynote or big workshops, you have to have a follow-up system. So uh, that's where I see even agents that we see that are getting, you know, dozens and hundreds of signups. Um, if I follow up with some of them where their business isn't growing, it's because they haven't created that follow-up system. Some of these are agents that have been successful for five, eight years. But when you look at what's falling through from the leads, they just don't have a follow-up system that they really like. So that's not one of the things that, I mean, we, we have recommendations. You can work a follow-up boss or line desk and you know, send your leads to Zapier or some of the certified partners help with that. And then the biggest thing for me as well is a personal brand. I mean, it could be KurtEuler.com. Um, it could also be my local brand if I own the brokerage or the team and I'm branding around that, but that's gonna be tied to you. Because according to NAR, now I haven't seen the numbers through, through this year of COVID, but for the previous like three or four years, NAR says the average agent changes brokerages every five years. And then before those three years, it was every six years. Well. So that means if you're in business, what happens if you've got a subdomain site that's like kurt.kw.com and then I go and I change to Remax or Cobalt Banker or you know anyone else? Well, my agent, my customers are used to going there and they kept my database. That personal brand is the foundation. So if you're here with Showcase, I know you're working, you've got most of these things in place already. I just want to reiterate, you're doing a great job if you've got these because I've talked, spoken to hundreds of thousands of agents now at some of my keynotes, some of my workshops. Uh, at online webinars over the last 18 to 24 months. And um, I'll tell you, most agents don't have this and successful ones do. So let's jump in. Let's jump into those nine things that I mentioned that if you do, um, to collectively, they're gonna help you be really successful. So for those customers that are on our uh, premium plan, you have access to preferred map styles. And so it defaults, to uh, Chuck asked about uh, WP Engine. I love WP Engine. It's great. Um, and Jay says content is king. And Jay, hey, yes, that's going to get in here. And Jay's website does this very does very well. What I uh, one of the couple of points I'm going to talk about here. 
here we're talking about map styles. So on the map styles, on that premium plugin, when you change this, it changes the way all of the maps look on your website. And so there's just a little highlight here. Um, but I want to draw your attention to something that Dwayne on our team has actually built. And let me click, do a screen share real quick over to my other screen. We have a demo website that has been created. I don't know what the lag is going to be in my screen share, so I hope it keeps up with me scrolling. But it's at demoandassociates.com. This is kind of been built out in a way of like sometimes if you're looking at a WordPress theme where it shows you like the features and the way different things could look, like the different ways homepages could look, Dwayne has done a fabulous job of presenting this to you. And so I know in our back end, it doesn't always show you what, um, it shows you the map style you can click. But what, what we show here is in that top menu, um, underneath features, you can see map style. And so what this does is the default map style is an example here up at the top. But as I scroll down, there's some small shifts if I choose to this high end map style, color changes, highlight differences. Um, light and bright map style. For those of us that are a little bit older, we might remember MapQuest. This is more of a MapQuest feel. Um, and so a lot of consumers like this. And so this is a great way to personalize your website by changing these up and seeing what your stats look like for a week. Or, hey, change it to something drastic and email five or 10 of your customers and say, hey, I'm trying something new on my website. I'd like to know what you think about the feel. Um, light and bright still, it's only a little bit of a change. Outdoors map style. Um, I do a fair bit of hiking. Um, the vest is not just for show, let's say. Well, this has a little more of a feel like some of the trail maps. You can have a more uh, muted version like this light gray style. This uh, On Demo and Associates, this shows you what that will look like so that you can get a little bit of preview before you just change it on your website. Let's scroll down the bottom. There's these two down here. They're, they're very similar, um, but they're different. And they're very, very different. And so they're class. They're called a classic map style or a muted gray, uh, grayscale map style. I talk to some agents. They look at them and they go, like, "Yeah, it just doesn't feel right to me." And that's okay. But I'll tell you, I've seen some really good-looking, well-performing sites that have used these because they're different. And, and one, they still look good and they function well, but they're different. And sometimes different is good because you stand out to your clients and it makes them question why. Other times, it's just based on the look and feel or even the niche that you're looking at. So this page on Demo Associates will show you what all those map styles look like. And that's one tip and trick. I know so many agents we have that have premium and they've just taken the default and that's great. But I do encourage you to try this and see what you think different. When you change that, it'll change the regional maps, the main search maps, the listing pages, hot sheets, open houses, anywhere maps display. So that's one example there. Another tip here, um, with Showcase IDX, if you're using a plugin like Yoast or sometimes Jetpack, they're gonna create a sitemap for your actual main WordPress pages. But Showcase IDX creates a sitemap for your IDX pages. So on that IDX page, <clears throat> so on that IDX, uh, with those IDX pages, that's gonna help your overall SEO ranking. So you wanna make sure that you update that to Google Search Console. So I think I have here just a couple of slides. So if you haven't used Google Search Console, you can just Google that. We have a help desk um, article on it. Uh, at the end of this, Dwayne will include, oh, he just included the link to it as well. It's free. You can also just Google, Google Search Console, set up a free account for it. And in the upper left, you're gonna be able to add a property. And it's gonna look here like this uh, uh, example.com or another example.com. There is a difference between adding KurtEuler.com and www.KurtEuler.com. So you can add them both if you if both are available. A lot of times we will uh, your host is set up to default to one of those. Like if you go to www.KurtEuler.com, it's going to take off the www and shorten that for you. Well, you're going to add that up there. Um, you're going to scroll down then on the left-hand panel, and it's going to say sitemaps, and then it's going to take you to step three, where you can add a new sitemap. Now, number four, you get that link to your individual XML sitemap from your Showcase IDX uh, uh, admin. So when you log in, there's a menu item for SEO on your website, and that's where this is included. If you have questions about it, the help desk link that um, Dwayne gave will give you that. This is great, because like if you're in 
first MLS here in Atlanta. I'm, I'm kind of on the border where there's an overlap between first MLS and Georgia MLS. First MLS, I think, has about 40,000 listings at any one time. Well, if you have all, if, if you haven't limited the, uh, the scope of that with your IDX settings, then all 40,000 listings could show on your website. You want to have that XML sitemap that comes out because this is also going to help your community pages rank as well. So this is a big thing. And it's, I'm amazed at how many of our clients have, when I look behind thing, you guys have, have, have uh, not added this. And this will help. This also helps if you have, we're going to talk about later, if you're on premium where you have premium content on each of the listing pages, you'll notice a sizable difference then of the amount of IDX pages that Google keeps in the index. And a lot of that reason is because of that unique content uh, that comes from that premium content. See, Chuck, you're typing a question. I may, uh, I may jump in if, I, uh, if it applies. If not, Dwayne can uh, keep it for later. But if you have questions, let me know. Um, very similar to that Google Search Console, we're going to hop over to Google Analytics. Uh, I, I know a lot, every, not everyone on the call is highly technical, so you might need to talk to your developer on these two. But Google Search Console kind of gives you some uh, more of a dashboard for errors, uploading sitemaps, and it, it works in conjunction with Google Analytics. Google Analytics is going to show you visitors. Where do they come from? What devices are they on? What pages did they visit? Well, within Showcase IDX, um, you, there's a place to add your UA code. So Google, this, we're going to come back and we're going to adjust this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so if you do have any questions on hearing me, uh, let me know. Let's see. There you go. So Chuck did ask on that last one was, uh, how is your page going to rank and better with Showcase IDX with 100 other agents doing the same thing? It's a combination. So the sitemap just is, is a part of the equation. A bigger piece, as Jay Valento uh, uh, mentioned, is content. We're going to get to that. Not, but th simply adding in the sitemap by itself is not going to boost your rankings. But what a sitemap does is it's basically a roadmap that tells Google where to go and crawl. And so if you've done really well with community pages, which we're going to talk about, then there's kind of already more places and more paths for Google to follow or go and index. But the sitemap kind of backs all of that up. So, and these do work in conjunction. That's a good question. Well, I'll try to cover it a little more when we get to community pages. On this UA code, Google's rolling out a new version of Google Analytics. And so we will be updating our plugin to work with this kind of new version as well. But for any of us that has, have had a site for a long time, or if you're still setting up uh, the original Google Analytics, you get a UA dash and then some number. Well, that UA code, when you add it to the back of Showcase IDX into your settings, it's going to then uh, allow us to send event data directly into your Google Analytics. And that's big. So, ooh, and Chuck said you are ranking on the first page of some of your subdivisions. That's awesome. And that's what we want to hear. So, and that's the experience of a lot of people. And so um, it's also why us niching down uh, as individual agents and marketers helps as well. So this UA code will help you see in the back end of Google, Google Analytics, it'll help you see people that sign up and that, that become a lead. And then it'll help you see people that message you using the, uh, the message about the property within Google Analytics. You just have to add that UA code. Um, it's as simple as a copy and paste. If you have questions on it, the knowledge base article will help you on it. Right, now, this is a big step uh, right here. I mean, big step in means creating a page in WordPress. And I know for a lot of people, like I'm sure Jay can hop in and Jay's got no problem creating pages. But I also know a lot of our agents, they do have to go to developer, a partner, um, or somebody on the marketing team to add a page. That's okay. What I want is to make sure that you're using the, um, the home valuation um, uh, widget to capture leads in Showcase and that you have a page dedicated to it. This is also really good if you do, if you are running any pay-per-click ads, or it's also good as part of your newsletter that you send back out. And what I mean by that is, if I come back over here to my, to my screen share, let's see if I'm still screen sharing here. All right, let's see if this changes here. All right, I want you to have, on, and I, this is where I see on successful sites, you have a single page on your website that is a home valuation page. And so we have created on here a couple of different ways that that could look. But for example, here, this widget that's here in the middle, the first name all the way down to the message, 
that's a call to action from Showcase IDX. So when somebody fills that out, it boom, sends their lead in the back of the Showcase IDX. And if you're connected to CRM, then it, we will send it on to a CRM. But this allows you, though, it allows your clients, your visitors, so they see it, for you to just give that, hey, this isn't a, Zillow, a, a Z estimate that you know is inaccurate. When you fill this out, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to I'm going to contact you to have a discussion about your property. But they can look a lot of different ways, and I see a lot of different ways to be successful. So on this demo and associates website in the top menu, there's home value page examples, and there's eight of them. I showed you one. You can click on another one. It'll pop up, give you some examples of what that could look like. They and and I've seen them look drastically different than these. Another example, if you just click, uh, if I click to here, it actually shows a kind of a preview of what all these individual pages look like. Um, I like this one down here, this uh, this page example seven. So I'm going to click into it so that you guys can see yet another way that that could look. Because your website can look however you want, and so since we work with short codes, you can integrate that either by yourself or with a partner. And so I like this one because one, hey, I, if, when somebody hits it. It's like get a home valuation. The call to action, the very top of the page is on the far right. And then down below, it does have that search information, which also reinforces because it's local, um, that, that you're a local expert. And either one, if somebody either starts to search, that's good for you. If they fill out that form, that's good for you. I personally like this example, but I've seen all of these um, uh, work well on different websites and yours might look different. So if you don't have this, I want you to create it. I want you to put it up in the navigation on your website. And I want you to put a call to action somewhere on your homepage uh, to drive people to this page as well. Next piece on here. And so Jay, to your question about the um, about content, uh, Chuck, you mentioned you had some community pages that was ranking. Oh, uh, Chuck asked, is that for the premium plugin only? No, the, uh, the home valuation is uh, for all of them. We do not do the home valuation. It's basically, uh, I think back to that, that home valuation plugin before I jump into this community pages is just a, um, a form. It's a form that captures the information that we've seen work really well for gathering that from the consumer um, and then pulls it in the IDX for you to be able to follow up with them. And I know every agent has a different way that they kind of follow up with a home valuation. Sometimes you get a range, sometimes you get a specific number, sometimes you'll do a CMA for them. That's up to you then to take it, take that information from there. On this step, I say create five community pages on your site because I want you to start. I, we have a lot of customers that miss this. And I'm going to tell you, the, the, just putting Showcase ADX on a website is going to help your client retention because consumers like using, uh, like using our home search. They like using it more than Zillow. That's great. But if you want to start ranking on uh, ranking outranking Zillow, outranking Trulia, Redfin, others, you got to have community pages. Uh, sometimes we also call them hot sheets. So I know there's different terms in, uh, in real estate for hot sheets, but hot sheets or community pages, it's just an individual page on your website that focuses on a single something. It could be a single type of home, it could be an individual condo building, it could be homes within a, a walking distance of a particular school or any other refined interest. We have a couple customers that have gone through and created community pages for pretty much every townhome community in their metropolitan area. That's thousands of different pages. But creating these pages, you do not have to create the thousands of pages of community pages to be successful. When I look at our 24 most successful websites, and there's a, there's a guide and even there's a free course that walks you through a lot of uh, these details and some others, when I look at those top 24 most successful websites, highest traffic, most leads, four of them had 11 or less community pages. That's not a lot. Um, these are relatively easy to create. I've got a guide that walks you through just how to do that. <laughs> Jay says he thinks he has a thousand. So, um, you know, Jay, if you're in that top 24, you'd be down at the bottom end of this li uh, list, which is four in our top 24 had a thousand pages or more. Two had 599, 11 of them had between 100 and 500. Um, three of them had basically a couple dozen. The point I wanna make on this is if you don't have community pages created already, you need to start creating some. If, if, you're, if, if, you don't, if going back and creating some community pages, a, a page in WordPress, getting that set up, it's something that you're not um, 
you're not capable of doing yourself because a, a web developer helps you get set up with it. I think our guides will probably walk you through how to do that, but you can also reach out to one of our certified certified partners. Um, we have a director on our website. Charles is on this call as uh, well. Um, he's one of those great certified partners that can help you with these community pages. They're easy to set up. And I have a guide that'll walk you through how to actually do that. And like I said, this is where the this is where things change. This is where things change because Google shifted about three or four years ago to something called EAP expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Now, a lot of times we all think that Google is just this massive cloud system that just runs code. But what you don't realize is Google also employs more than 15,000 people that their entire job is to bring up web pages from search results and follow this like 200 page guide that they have to basically help train the algorithm on. And one of the most important things in uh, the, 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 quality guidelines, section 4.1 for those people now, is expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. So when you create these community pages and you use your custom local content that you know, that's how, Chuck, you asked about how do you compete against other, other agents? Most agents are just putting up, putting up an IDX on a website and they're, and they're kind of done. Or they'll use something like a Real Geeks, which is okay for pay-per-click, but horrible and organic and doesn't let you create community pages like this. Um, subdomains, there, there's a lot of reasons. They, you just can't rank for, uh, rank with those. The, when you create these community pages, it allows you to not just meet your consumer and your client's need, it allows you to meet Google's needs because they see that you have unique content on there. Example, when I give, I live in Roswell, Georgia. I'm about a mile and a half from the Chattahoochee River. The They've built this, like, I don't know, probably three to five mile long uh, river walk. So think boardwalk, but along the Chattahoochee River. People want to live within walking distance of that. And so if I was an agent here, I would be creating community page just for single family homes in different price ranges within walking distance of the Roswell River Walk. And so that's a good thing to do that, to do that for. Um, it also, I'm going to tell you one other thing. So that's how, that's this is kind of the key to getting organic traffic is these community pages with Showcase IDX. Nothing else delivers that IDX data the way that we do. The way that we deliver it is a proprietary way that it renders with WordPress on your website so it looks natural to you. That's great in that the search results for townhomes in Roswell, Georgia between $250,000 $300,000, we render it so it looks native to Google, which they like, but it's our, it's how we do that combined with your local information. We're talking like 200 to 700 words of content on, a, on one of these community pages. Something that if I ask you, hey, tell me why if you were an agent in Roswell, Georgia, tell me about condos in, uh, condos near Canton Street, you could just rattle that off in four minutes and you'd have a perfect answer for me in person. That's what I want to go on those pages for. When you do this, it's great also because a huge bit of getting organic traffic is getting link backs to your website. So there's on-page SEO. This is where this is where we help directly with. And there's off-page. Off-page SEO is, despite what a lot of SEO people tell you, when you look at all the studies, the number one ranking factor for Google is links. And it's links to specific pages. So if, Chuck, to your point, if it's just a, a, an IDX page that just has condos in Roswell, Georgia, who wants to link to that? But if it's a community page about condos in Roswell, Georgia, um, and it's got useful information, it talks about the local festivals, it talks about some of the events, it talks about it, it's really close to that river walk that I mentioned. Do you think people want to link to that versus the generic one? Of course. So this referring domains is something that I grabbed from one of our customers. They started building a community, community pages, and this is how the referring domains back to their website. Work. So that's a great thing. I'm also going to tell you, I've spoken to uh, actually an agent that is on this webinar right now, and they shared with me that when they started building out community pages, it changed how they interact with clients. So you guys know as well as I do, whenever you're talking with somebody in person, you meet somebody uh, you know, at a barbecue, you meet somebody at a community event, I know that's a little bit more rare during COVID today, but when you ultimately ask them for their contact information, it always becomes a little awkward, no matter how skilled you are at it. 
because it's becoming, you've become, instead of being a, a knowledge source, you've now become a salesperson just at that moment. And so even, and if you give them your card, like you hope that they call you back. So what this agent shared with me was, he said, when I started building out community pages, I built out community pages um, around beaches in the community that I'm at. And a lot of people are buying second fam uh, or second homes for their family and uh, beach property. So what he did was he would meet somebody out and could tell that they were local, talk to them, answer some questions. Conversation goes great. It was always a little bit weird when he asked for the phone number. Instead, he goes, hey, I've got a website that shows you the open houses that are here in town. Um, it's got a bunch of other information that may be relevant to you. Um, you want me, can I just send that to you? If you just, just and so he, he'd open up, a, he knew the hot sheets on his page, he'd open up his website, he'd click to the, the beach, specific beach community page, and he'd go, just give me your email address and it'll email you a link to that page. And if you wanna see any open houses, go to him this weekend, contact me if I can help you with anything. The great thing about that is when they found out was one, it changed the relationship because he continued staying in the information source, wisdom source, wise counsel place of that. So he had more people go, yep, I'm gonna give you an email address. Also found out that as people um, came to their site, the vast majority of those people, because he built that local content, Jay, that you talked about, he built the local content on those pages that he was emailing them from his own phone um, when they entered the email, the vast majority of those people signed up and registered on his website. Boom, collected information, went to his website. Then he had a follow-up process. Every Sunday, he looked at how did his business go? Oh, sorry about that. Phone call, phone call. Let me pause that for just a minute. There we go. What he did is in the end of every Sunday, he looked back at his emails that were sent from his phone and he looked at who signed up on his website. And if there was anybody that didn't sign up, he just followed up with them. So he had the follow-up system. But what I love about that was he used technology from Showcase IDX to build out these community pages. And he changed how he interacted with clients because all we did was give him a way to, to get that local knowledge out of his head into something that was useful for the clients. Um, so that, I like that. Another thing here I wanna show you about is I want you on these community pages, I want you to experiment with the listing view. I would say the vast majority of our clients that use this grid view. So if you're not familiar with what this looks like, let me click back over to this uh, share screen here. When I come over to a community page, actually, let me go to, back to here. Um, most people on a community page, they're going to, <clears throat> I hope everyone can see my, my screen and it's updating. If it, if it can't, please let me know. When I, when I see listings on most people's websites, it looks like this. It's a grid view. So a search is performed, it's on the community pages, it shows a grid of all these. Now this is great for easy scanning. Um, and, and I'm not saying not to use this. There's a, people are wonderfully successful for this. But I have seen, uh, especially if, if you're looking for a really competitive term, there's an, ad, uh, there's an advantage to using the list view. When you use this list view, I want you to think about this from Google's perspective. We talked about that EAT, that expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Well, I want, said I wanted you to write 500 words of extra uh, of original content on any community page. Maybe that goes up top, kind of some, so we gave an example of what that could look like here. Maybe you put it below. But Google also, part of that uh, is Google likes fresh content. So on the grid view, it only showed basically the address, um, you know, bed, bath numbers, and showed you the price maybe days on market. On this though, keep in mind, this, this demo and associates uses our demo data. It is not, it is not live actual data. But in this case, it would be pulling in 100 to 200 uh, characters of, a, of content for each MLS listing that you would show. And you can still on this list view, you can show 20 or 60. So if you're showing 20, then, then, the, ML, then, then the IDX, our IDX is always updating an additional 150 or so characters for say 20 listings on that community page. That helps with uh, Google rankings. Do consumers like this better than the grid view? It depends on the consumer. So that's why we have both. If it was definitive, we wouldn't do that. Uh, or we would just have one. But this still gives them a lot of the things, adding an emoji to it, starting a comment, sharing the listing, starring it so they can come back to it later. 
but that's something I want you to consider doing on, on your community pages, especially if you're, like I said, if you're, if you're looking for a community page to rank and you're in a, kind of a, hard, uh, a high competition, if you were looking for condos in Atlanta, that's going to be high competition. If you're looking for condos in Tampa, high competition. I might default something like this. Even as you start to niche that down further, that's still going to be something that um, this list view might help you with that extra little boost. And maybe it takes you from, you know, number 15 on Google rankings to number five or number five to number three. Um, something to experiment with anyways. Seeing so some people be very successful with it. Another piece here. Now, this is only for people that are in premium. So I'll tell you what. Most people upgrade to premium because for two reasons. Now, there's a lot of other reasons. If you have a team, there's some routing information, but people tend to upgrade because one, it gives a premium integration with line desks, follow boss, real sync. So if you have a big team, you might be using Salesforce. But number two is the premium content lock. So this is at the bottom of a listing. Um, it shows we, we have information and you don't have to turn this on. This you can show this just to every visitor if you want. But it includes for the listings, the walk score for the neighborhood, the transit score, um, bike scores, links to nearby restaurants, population insights, and then community demographics, gender, age, education levels, average household income, a lot of marital status, a lot of things like that. And so, <clears throat> so this is some of that content that I mentioned. You'll notice if you're on premium versus essentials, and you have a site map and you have your site map, you'll notice more of those individual IDX pages will, will be held in the Google index. And we believe that it's because it's premium content, because that's the only real difference between the two accounts on an individual listing page. And we see that be a very large, um, a very large increase at times. But the premium content lock allows you to put this sign up link over that content. And when you turn this on, I wouldn't do this all the time, but I, I especially if you're if you're still if you're a newer agent, if if you're still building your brand, uh, you might want to focus much more on brand recognition and getting people familiar with you. So maybe you don't want to use premium content. You want people just to see the value you give them right away. But I'll tell you, I've tested this in some sites. I found some sites that have about two thousand visitors a month. Uh, uh, one on and one not. Five thousand, ten thousand, and then I I, I ask. Can, can I, can I turn this button for you? And all this is a click of a button. What it does is it grays out, it kind of shadows out that information and it puts this little sign up so the consumer has to uh, register on your website so you capture their contact information before they see it. And I've seen, I've seen as much as a 10X increase in leads, a 10X increase. Same sites, 5,000 visitors a, uh, a month. One doesn't have it, one does. I turn it on, boom, they become almost identical. In the same in the same basic markets, I, I I'm not sure I've tested in the exact market, but we'll say comparable size markets. Um, so that's a big deal, and I I don't know exactly why this is, but I want you to think about this like a consumer. How you would see this is, you know, consumers are never coming to your website from an individual address search. I know as agents sometimes we'll search for a new listing, and we're like, hey, I want to look, I want to see that listing address on my website. That's not what consumers are doing. I'm searching for community pages, as we talked about. Uh, I'm coming to your website from an ad. I'm coming to your website from your newsletter, um, from us meeting in the community. So I got to this premium content because I saw a search result, whether from a community page or a search that I did. I then looked at listing. I chose an individual listing to click into to see the details. There's all the information in the property. And as I scroll down, after I'm still scrolling. So I'm still interested in this property. Now I start to see there's more information about the property and, and you get some Sorry, guidance on it. I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry, I set off my Apple watch. I think that, that that's the reason that, that that's so, there's such a large increase in the signups because consumers are already vested in a property at that point. And so they've gone through that search, they've gone through your community page and they found that property or, or they've gone back to the search and they've gone through five or 12 properties. And now they're still interested and they're scrolling down like, I want to know more about this. It's an email address. It's a great way to get additional signups there. So I want you to, if you're, if, if you're on premium and you haven't used this premium content lock, I want you to go try it. I want you to go 
keep in mind the result you've gotten kind of the last like week or the last month. And I want you to go turn it on for the same amount of time. If you want to test it for a week or two weeks, I think those are probably good levels. Um, go put on your calendar uh, an event for 15 minutes, one week, two weeks, 30 days out. And I want you to come back and I want you to relook re at that. Hey, how's my site performed in the lead generation? And let me know, because I bet you're going to see an increase in the number of leads. Now, this is something else that um, I've seen a, not a lot of very, uh, some, we've seen some people do this. This is not a showcase IDX form. I want to be very clear about that. Um, this is just a form. You can create it with Contact 7, a plugin. Your theme might have it built into, or thanks, Jimmy. Siri needs my help. Or you might need, uh, or, or you could use uh, Ninja Forms as a, as another free, free form uh, uh, plugin that I use at times. But what it is, is I want you to have a, a page on your website. Um, it's gonna, it needs to be in your navigation. It needs to have some calls to action with your site on there. But for people to create a, uh, to, to enter so that you as the agent can do a unique search for them. And so what does that look like? Because as an, you know, a lot of the searches, a lot of consumers, they want to do the search for themselves. But I can tell you, I'm one of those, I'm one of those people that like, this is what would endear me into your site to, to get me to start using you. The IDX is great, but my wife and I like our I like our house now. We also have property in a family property in North Georgia, and in the next number, or next few years, we might be looking to buy a, a smaller horse farm, twenty to thirty acres north of where we're at right now, just a little bit. Well, I mean, twenty to thirty acres, still relatively close to Atlanta. Atlanta that's going to meet some specific parameters that I have. I want it to either have a pond or uh, have enough uh, have have enough rolling hills so that I can put one in a good, like an acre sized pond. And there's other things that I would want in that property. There's no home search possible that's going to allow me to just find all of those things. So when you have this page on your website that says, hey, I'm gonna do that white glove, that concierge treatment for you. I, I have, I, I've, not, uh, I've not just bounced from your website now because you're the agent that I know is at least starting the conversation with me that says, "How? what do I need as an agent to help you, Kurt, find that horse farm? Um, and yes, you can make fun of me for a horse farm, but I had horses growing up. I love them, miss them. Um, I may even have an example of what this looks like up here. Yes, we do. We, um, see if I come over here, on our, um, on this demonassociates.com, uh, Realtor Ben, the whole site is kind of built around Realtor Ben, um, our fictitious agent, get a white glove home search. And then it has the screenshot that, that we took here. All it takes is just having that form and driving people to it. It's also a great way to follow back up with past clients too, because um, you can create variations about this as well, kind of more of a CMA or, um, and I've seen some people do that in some ways that's been very, very um, good. Now, I think this is probably the last of the big items, but this is a big one. Uh, if you've used Showcase for, for a good while, you've seen our friends and family search, and I'm gonna tell you, it works really well for a lot of our clients. But I'm also gonna tell you, it doesn't work so well for some of our clients. And the difference tends to be consumers aren't used to it. They're used to searching by themselves. They're used to searching on Zillow, Redfin, most agents' websites, because this is proprietary to us. And what happens when the husband finds a property and wants to send it to his wife? Or I give the example sometimes, my mother-in-law bought a condo uh, three years ago here in Atlanta. What was she doing when Susan was looking for a property? She was texting and emailing properties to my wife, Valerie, me, my brother-in-law, um, one or both of the sisters. Instead of those, the, those, those text messages and emails happening and them being disparate as well, we have a friends and family search. And that friends and family search happens on your website entirely. And so consumers just aren't used to it. So there's a little bit of you have to train them for it. Now we're gonna be improving this. So please join uh, Scott Lockhart and me on Friday for our, uh, for our Showcase Live update. But already I'm gonna tell you, when it, we have a video that's a white label video that walks through what this process looks like and it shows a, uh, it shows, it shows a couple and they have, a, uh, I think a 14 or 15 year old daughter and the, the one partner invites the other one and they find a couple properties, they invite the daughter to the search. All of this, all of that conversation that otherwise would be text message emailed around, now would happen on your individual website. Well, 
sometimes I see agents that they actually go through and they, they, they've created their own version of this video um, that we've made for you. And that's great. Um, other times I've seen people actually take out their phone and show clients how to use it. Great. The video that we have, and we have, uh, uh, we, we have it that um, I think, yeah, Dwayne just uh, messaged in chat. You can take this video, it's in Vimeo, and just add it to your website. And we have an example of that on the Demo and Associates page as well. And it, remember, it's yours because this is your website, which is powered by Showcase IDX. And so I want you to say, how to use my friends and family search or something like that as the title of your page. I want you to send an email to your clients that says, how to, how to, how to search confidentially with your, with your friends and family. This video walks through how to do that. And so let me click back over to, um, let me come back over here to the, to the demo and associates real quick here. Let me see. <coughs> let me share my screen when I come back here. So on the screen here, you're gonna see, um, if I was to scroll down, whenever I save something, um, I, I, uh, I might ask a question about it. If I click save, it saves to my consumer dashboard. I can also, though, react on properties, comment on them. And when I do that, then when I invite my wife, Valerie, to it, she gets to see that on her dashboard as well. And so, hey, like, I don't want a home with a pool. I want a pond, but I don't want to take care of a pool again. I've had that in my life. Not for me. Thank you for all of everybody that loves them. I want to come to your house. I just don't want to maintain it. Valerie might pick a property with a pool, and I'm going to comment, God, this one has a pool. Let's go look for another one. Um, I can also, when I'm doing the search, I can also make a comment. Now that's a confidential search between the people that are doing it. I can also make a comment agent visible. So that's when I go, hey, this uh, this property looks like it, from the photos, it looks like it has a storage area in the basement that's stubbed out for a bathroom. Is that actually there? That's something I'd want my agent to weigh in on probably before I go see the place. Well, that's, that's a good question. So all of this is a way not just to interact with friends and family confidentially, um, but it also is a way to engage uh, your clients and, and kind of give them wise counsel as well. Now, this is a bonus tactic. So I've seen some people be really successful for it, and it is about getting the wording right. And I don't have the exact wording and where there's things that we, we, we see our customers doing that uh, we can duplicate or we can kind of genericize. We will show that to show that as best practices. But I, I don't want to just copy somebody's email or wording, but I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm going to let you see if you want to test this here. We have, we've seen some people be very successful um, as a bonus tactic using the, the save search on their website with past clients. And we're not talking past clients when you know they might be getting close to looking for a property. That's every five years, um, depending on where you're at. Sometimes it's more eight to 10 years people are uh, moving. The sweet spot seems to be six months after you sold them the property until about 24 months after you sold them the, uh, sold them the, the property. And you call them up and you, you start a conversation to see if you can help them and you want to spark some curiosity. Hey, I live in Bristol Oaks we're in Roswell, Georgia. There's about 120 homes in our neighborhood. People are often wanting to move in. Um, so a lot of times we'll have people asking, do you have any friends that are wanting to move close? We're going to be listing our house. We'll have people posting in our Facebook group. Hey, is anybody, you know, we have friends that want to move in. Or, so there's, there's a couple of things. What you do is you would call me up and go, hey, Kurt, I know I sold you a house about a year ago. Can I set you up for a safe search so that you can know when there's open houses available nearby? Because I don't know, if you, got, if you and Valerie are looking at updating anything in your house, but the open houses will let you go see what anybody else has upgraded in your neighborhood. And you got to get the wording right on it. But you spark that curiosity factor for people because, I mean, or the nosy neighbor concept that says, "Hey, you of course want to know what they're, what you know, what they, what what they've installed in their backyard for that, for that, uh, all that construction that's going on behind the fence." So, that's a great way to get past clients back coming to your website, and then whenever a new property comes for sale, they're going to get an alert that's going to drive them back to your website. And you were clear up front: I'm not trying to sell you a different home. I know you're happy in the home I've already sold you. But it's one is it's great for keeping you top of mind with them so that when they are ready to buy or sell, uh, buy and sell in a, in a few more years, you're top of mind. But I've also seen this being really big for increasing referrals. 
Because what happened? I gave you the example of uh, Bristol Oaks, my neighborhood. People want to move in here. This works really well in mid rises and high rises where there's condos as well, where, hey, it's a fun building. I want my friends to come nearby. And I don't have no concept that a building, uh, that something's available. Well, when that, that alert comes out, and I see in, in Bristol Oaks, I see that a property on the other side of the neighborhood is available. And I go, God, that'd be great for our, for our friends, Gary and Amanda. What do I do? I, as a consumer, your client, I forward the email that came from your website, your IDX. I forward it to them and say, hey, this property just came up for sale. Hey, there's an open house. We'd love you guys to live close by. And then our friends, what do they do? They click the link that's going to drive them back to your website. So that's a huge way that we've seen that I've seen for increasing referrals. And again, it doesn't work for everybody because you have to get that wording right when you connect with your clients. But if you do, it's a great way for both kind of getting the, the nosy neighbor kind of um, curiosity, but also increasing referrals in a really a value add. Because a lot of times, who do you recommend? Who's top of mind to you? So I want to help you stay top of mind. So that's all the, the really big topics here, the, the true technical things we're going to walk through. In just a minute, we're going to open up for questions. So if you have questions, I'm going to default to Dwayne at first on some of the questions, but feel free to start thinking about your questions now. I'm going to tell you, though, everything I just talked about, it, it requires one additional ingredient, um, actually two, I guess, in a way, to be successful. And one is you have to find a mindset and you have to start new processes to ensure consistency. Jay mentioned he's got thousands of hot sheets. You do not get thousands of hot sheets by sitting down on a Saturday and pounding them out once. It doesn't work that way. So like, how do you become a runner? How do you, how do you complete a marathon? You have to do things consistently over time. You want to eat right, it's consistency over time. So what I want to just encourage you is one, continue coming back into some of our webinars, our trainings, because you're a showcase customer already. That's great, but I want you to be immaculately successful. We see people that, as the only way I can describe how their business has grown is immaculately successful, and I want to help you get that way. Frankly, from talking to a lot of marketers in real estate that are out there, and going, and I mean, being a speaker at so many marketing and real estate things, there's a lot of bad marketers out there, and most agents are not really good marketers. So, by all means. I think part of getting a mindset is, is being around others that are trying to do um, what you want to accomplish and being around those that have already successfully traveled that road. Jay mentioned he's got thousands of, um, thousands of hot sheets. It's a great, Jay's a great wealth of knowledge to be around because you've got five. How do you get to a thousand? Well, there's uh, multiple different ways. When you're around people like Jay, when that's the conversation we can foster in our in our private Facebook group, it helps us all create a mindset so that we're working and growing your businesses together. And you mentioned here about starting new processes to ensure consistency. I, you don't have to have thousands of hot sheets to be successful. That's a great way to be successful. And if you add original content, that will lead to success. But you said, mentioned you can never do that. So how about, some? what would a process look like? Well, a process could look like just putting 30 minutes on your calendar every Monday afternoon that says build community pages. And the only thing you do for that 30 minutes, no matter what, is build community pages. Maybe you get one done, maybe you get four done, but you just do them week in and week out. That's a process, not that too complicated. Figuring out things like that is how you're going to take from not just getting a great real estate website and a successful business, and you're, they're all of these things, they share those two pieces together. So with that, I want to go into some questions and answers here. 